I love clarinets. Okay, so this week we're going to go to page 11. And like any week, if what we did last week was really kind of tricky and you need to re review that, maybe do that again instead of going forward, it's okay to do that. Absolutely. Okay, these are all skills and you're going to use these individual skills for as long as you're a musician. And so it pays to take time to just really get them nailed down. So if you need to back up a week or two and you know keep working your skills or whatever and record a previous uh, lesson for your instructor, I encourage you to do it. Just let in your video, let your instructor know what it is that you've been having trouble with. And um, you know if it's squeaking or if it's not being able to get a sound really strong. Some of the things that I wanna remind you about, um, and you've heard it before from me, but it's always good to remind is that we never want to get this skin underneath our top teeth, even a little bit. It's called a double embouchure and it does not work well, especially when you're first starting out. So we want our teeth on our mouthpiece. Okay. Then I fold my bottom lip under from there. Once I've set my teeth down, it's like I set down, and then I fold, and then I close the corners and blow. Now, one thing that you might be experiencing that a lot of people do is kind of having a weak sound, like you feel like you're blowing your guts out and you're just not getting much. Okay, so how, if you've experienced that or some version of that, okay, the reason that that's happening is because there's too much flesh coming in contact with the bottom of the reed. It's not that you're crazy. And it's not that you're no good. And it's not that you'll never learn the clarinet. Promise me, I was not the smartest kid. I guarantee you, you were smarter than I am. So it is, there's too much contact. So, you know, let's say if you've ever like messed around or there's ever been a piece of paper and a fan gets behind a fan and it rattles, right? And it makes a lot of noise. But if you put your hand on that, the sound almost immediately stops. Why? Because of the pressure. If something is vibrating and we touch it, it almost always stops at least the sound. It may not stop the vibration, but a lot of times it will stop the sound. So what you're doing is you're stopping part of the sound because there's too much flesh there. So remember when I told you when you put your teeth on top and you roll your bottom lip, to kind of think thin or stretch your bottom lip. What that does is it smooths out all that flesh that normally would be like this, right? So if I have my corners forward, so I think, I think the easiest way to think of this is just stretch, S stretch that over your bottom lip like a bumper, right? And so I'm gonna show you the difference between it. I'm gonna play with my lips just really soft, like I just did, and corners kind of forward. The other thing is, is that my top teeth are not really firmly on the top of the mouthpiece. They're kind of floating. So like if someone came up and kind of just very gently tugged, it would just slide all over the place. If you came up to me when I'm playing, if you did this, it's not that it wouldn't slide, but it wouldn't be really, really easy for you. Kind of have it like, feels like it's kind of hooked up, up under my teeth. And my teeth are solid on the top of this. So as I stretch, it's like, whoa, what just happened? And the bottom line is that I've stretched out that skin on the bottom of my lip so that I've created a very thin support line underneath there for this reed to vibrate and vibrate it will. The other thing is, is always check your reed. Remember, go back to the pictures from, I wanna say maybe three weeks ago, where we showed you some pictures where I put my reed a little bit too low, a little bit too high. And that makes a big difference too. It's gotta be in that sweet spot where that little thin rail is showing. So those two things 
and you fix those two things and I have a feeling that your whole world will change in terms of sound. Now some of you guys are probably getting a great sound right now and that's fine, but if you find that you're not getting a good sound, those are usually the first two things to be suspect. Now, if it's squeaking like and everybody wants you to go in the basement or the garage, that's usually your fingers leaking. If you've, well, you may not have gotten to play recorder last year, but if you did get it in before we had the shutdown for coronavirus, you know that if your fingers leak just a little bit on those plastic recorders, oh my goodness, it is shrill city and they squawk something terrible. So you really do have to have tone holes covered and any leakage will create the squeaks, okay? So a lot of people try to change this up here thinking this is creating the squeak sound, but it's almost always the fingers. Okay, so this week, let's take a look at number 49, Hey Ho, Nobody's Home. So this one is gonna go one note lower now. It's gonna go to the low A. So we had A, G, F, E, D, C, B, and then A, right? So if it's backwards in the alphabet, so if I went up from this position, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, right? It's brilliant going up. Order the alphabet, super easy. We can go all the way to the note G, and then we start back over at A again because we don't have the note name H. Okay, so 49, hey ho, nobody's home. This one's gonna be a little tricky. And the trickiness on this is the hey ho, right? So we're gonna go from D to the low, A. So you might wanna just practice that a couple times. How about we do that together? D to the new note, A. <laughs> Let's do that again. You ready? D to A. Okay, so that in itself is a skill. Once you've got that part of it, I think that the rest of it is not too terribly hard. Not too bad. Okay, so here we go from the beginning. You ready? Nice and slow, nice and steady. One, two, here we go, D. That's a cool melody, isn't it? So if you squeaked on the low A's, take heart. The more you go between D and A, and sometimes I like to just make a silly kind of exercise, not even kind of worrying about it, but play D to A. And just go back and forth on one breath for as long as I can before I run out of breath. And just giving my fingers that pattern back and forth and back and forth, just like playing a video game, the more you do it, the faster your, your uh, hand control becomes and the better you can do it. And it's the same thing with your clarinet. Okay, so now we're moving on and I'd like you to look at the yellow box, yellowy orange box that's underneath number 49 and it's called dynamics. Dynamics is just a fancy word for volume. Volume control. We can control volume on clarinet. That's a little tricky at first, but if I play on my clarinet, I'm going to play and control my volume by the speed of air that I put through the mouthpiece in the reed. And so I'll give you an example. You've got these two symbols that remind you of less than, greater than signs in math, and they're simply this. When they start out, you would be softer, 
and as they open up, you, it becomes greater, right? It becomes greater in its volume. And then when it starts open like this and it slowly comes down to the point, it does the same thing that it might imply in math. This is the greater, and then it is slowly tapering back, okay? So this takes some thought, and you may not be super great at it at first, and that's okay, because it is not easy. Because you're thinking about notes, and you're thinking about rhythm, and creating sound, and all of that stuff. And you may still be thinking about, um, do I have my teeth on right? Is my bottom lip pulled right? And now we're going to go, oh, now you get to think about how fast you're going to put your, your air through your instrument. <laughs> so it's a lot to think about. Talk about multitasking, right? So 50, what I would do, I'm, I'm going to skip 50 for right now. I'm going to just do 51. So it's coming up the scale, okay? And what we're going to do is I'm going to start with my Airstream slow. So it's easiest to do this on one note. So let's do it on a G. Big breath, start with a slow, like I'm blowing out a whole lot of birthday candles, right? Pacing myself, and then I'm slowly letting my air get faster and faster. So as I increased my air, the instrument got, got louder. And in the beginning, you could probably hear, I was playing with something called a false tone. I didn't even have enough air going to really get the reed fully going, okay? So that's actually a little exercise that you use when you're older to really challenge yourself and control your air. So 51, we're gonna just try to start a little softer and to come up a little louder as we get into the second measure. And then we play forte, F, strong for a measure and then the next measure has what we call a decrescendo okay to get less and we'll do that for a measure and then the last measure we'll try to play softly so if this is too hard in the beginning just play it with me play it so that you know the exercise then we can always go back and try to do it again doing dynamics. So if there's too many things going on at once for you to be successful, take something out of the quotient so that you're not thinking about so much, okay? I've been playing for a long time, so I'm going to do all of them. I'm going to do notes and rhythm, and I'm going to do dynamics. But be good to yourself. If you can't keep all three balls juggling at first, it's okay. All right, here's 51. One, two and here we go <laughs> to do that. So one of the best ways to get a little more air and a little more volume is to do it in the notes that have more length. It's a little trickier to do it on eighth notes, but certainly as you hold out a quarter note, you can kind of think push more air at it. And uh, this technique of playing dynamics is used in cartoon and movie music all the time. It implies often if you're watching your favorite cartoon this next weekend, um, as things get louder, it f implies the characters getting closer to something. And as it gets softer, it implies that something is receding or is getting farther away. So this is a really interesting technique that we use in music to really kind of manipulate emotions in the people that are listening to our music. So those are the, uh, the main things for today. I'd like you to turn the page to page 12. And number 52, the Tone Builder, Rhythm Etude, and the Chorale. I think that these are things that you can just do on your own. I don't think that they're difficult. I think you will be just fine on those. How about if you pick 
one of the three on 52, the tone builder, the rhythm etude, or the chorale, and surprise your instructor. Just one of the three. And let's see how you do doing everything with your skills that you know so far. Okay, so just be fearless, do the best that you can. I've got confidence in you. And then when we get back the following week, we're going to take a look at some new songs. So please don't panic when you see like number 53, Aura Lee, or things that are on page 13, because you notice like there's a lot, there's symbols going in underneath your notes. And um, in number 53, there's an A line and a B line. And what do I do with that? We'll talk about all those things next week. So for this week, have fun with Hey Ho, Nobody's Home. And watch that low A. Just remember, you want to have those fingers sealed up. And then trying your best to play the dynamics, being good to yourself if it's kind of tricky, then you're having a hard time with it at first. You'll get better with it as time goes on. And then picking one of the lines in number 52, one of the playable lines, not the rhythm rap, tone builder, rhythm etude, or chorale, any one of those three, and playing that for your instructor. That's a your choice for this week. Have a great week, and I'll see you back next week. Bye-bye.